We are now ready to present the algorithm for solving the decoding problems that was developed by Andrew Viterbi four decades ago. To implement the dynamic programming for decoding problem, we introduced the variable scorer ki, which corresponds to the maximum product weight among all passes from source to node ki, or the node corresponding to state k and located in the i's column of the graph. Let's consider all predecessors of this node corresponding to all possible states. And obviously, scorer at the nodes ki equal to maximum through all possible states L of scorers in the previous column multiply by the weight of the edge from the node in the previous column, node L, to the node k in the column i, which is, in other words, is maximum through all states uh, scorer in the previous column multiplied by the weight of the edge L k i minus 1. Uh, so, the recurrency for the Viterbi algorithm will be scorer ki, we equal maximum through all states, scorer L i minus 1 multiplied by weight of the edge L k i minus 1. The initialization, of course, is scorer at the source equal 1, and the maximum product weight over all passes from source to sync is computed at the nodes sync, in which a score of sync will be maximum through all states uh, of the scores in the last column of the Manhattan. Now let's estimate the running time of the Viterbi algorithm in the case when HMM has forbidden transition. Forbidden transition means that the probability of switching for a given pair of states is zero. For example, in this HMM diagram, there are four states but we see that there is no edges connecting some states. They correspond to forbidden transition in the HMM. You notice that the number of edges in this case in the Viterbi's Manhattan is smaller than for the case of the full HMM diagram when all transitions are allowed. And in this case, the running time is, of course, number of edges in the HMM diagram multiplied by the number of emitted symbols M. You, of course, notice that if in the past we were maximizing the sum of weights of edges in the pass in the graph, now we maximize the product of edges uh, for a pass in the graph. And when we maximize the product, there is a danger of overflow. Therefore, bioinformaticians prefer to work with this logarithm of scores. So if you transform the recurrency uh, for the uh, scorer uh, ki by taking its logarithm, then the recurrency corresponding to the product of weights trans is transformed into the recurrency corresponding to the sum of weight, and this transformation substitute weight of edges by the logarithm and transform product of weight into familiar sum of weights. So there is no difference between computing optimal solution in the decoding problem and the traditional longest pass in the graph, uh, something that we studied before. Note that we have already learned how to compute probability of the hidden pass pi, and it turned out to be easy. It amounts simply to multiplication of transition probabilities. And our intuition tells us that probably it will be equally easy to compute the probability of the emitted sequence x. Let's see whether our intuition is correct. So when we compute probability of pi, it is simply multiplication of transition probability. But when we compute probability of x, it's the sum through all possible passes pi of probabilities of x pi, and it is not clear how to compute this sum. Note that probability of x is sum of uh, through all possible hidden passes pi of the product weights of pi uh, and compare it with a score at sync in our Viterbi Manhattan, which is maximum through all possible passes pi of the product weight of pi. These two expressions look extremely similar. 
let's try to see whether we can explore this similarity to come up with an algorithm for computing probability of the emitted sequence X. So to find out what is the most likely outcome of an HMM, we first need to solve the following outcome likelihood problem. Find the probability that an HMM emits a given string. The input is a string X emitted by an HMM, and the output is the probability that the HMM emits this string. And since you already saw the similarity between computing probability of X and Viterbi algorithm, let's try to figure out whether we can solve the outcome likelihood problem by changing a single symbol in the Viterbi recurrence. So uh, let's try to modify Viterbi algorithm and introduce a variable forward Ki, which is total product weight of all passes to the node ki. Here are all predecessors of node k, and therefore forward ki equals to the sum through all possible states of the values forward uh, l i minus 1 in the previous column multiplied by the weight of the edge from the previous column to node k, which is simply sum through all state A forward L I minus 1 multiplied by the weight of the edge L K I minus 1. And the only difference between this recurrency for forward K I uh, and score K I is the change of maximum into the sum. Now, that's all interesting, but you may have a question of what it all has to do with these biological applications, and in the next section, we will start looking at application of HMM to finding protein demands.